Hey gang, Anthony Fontana here, coming at you live after five. Just wanted to say hi real quick. It is Saturday night, uh, a cold day here on Long Island, uh, somewhat busy, and just winding down for the next couple of hours. Watch a little, uh, watch a little TV, and uh, then maybe go back to work uh, on some tax stuff and a few other things that MJ and I are doing right now. So we're just having a good time. We're going to keep following through what we started earlier in the week with regard to our words, our self-image, and how we project ourselves. So I think this is a critical piece, and I'm going to be hammering this because I know how effective understanding this has been for my own life over the years. Extremely effective in terms of how I've transformed myself uh, with my words and with my actions. Hey, Tracy, how are you? It's very important for me. What's going on, Anthony? So you know, what's inside you is always going to reflect on what's outside you. It's just the nature of how we live our lives. We're exposed to thousands of external inputs every single day, 24-7. They come at us from every direction but up. Not necessarily all bad, but they do have an impact on our lives. They empower us or they disempower us. There's no middle ground. They're either going to lift us up or they're not going to lift us up. And we need to be observant of what we're allowing inside ourselves because eventually, if you don't pay attention to them, they will become the boss of you without without question. They will start owning you and you won't even know. What's going on, Anthony? How are you, brother? Good to see you. Uh, there's some wine in the cards tonight, Anthony, just in a little while. It's been a little crazy today. So let, let's, pitch it, let's pitch it to you guys in an outdoor cafe or an outdoor restaurant. You're, you're in the square and you're watching the two of them uh, from a little, a little bit away. Um, I sure can, Anthony. Why don't you give me a buzz after this call? Uh, without a doubt, I would love to help that. But whatever I need to do to help you guys, I'll, I'll be there for you. Let's picture these two guys sitting in a cafe. You're looking at one. He's slumped over. He's sitting. He's sitting there. He's looking downtrodden, drinking a cup of coffee. The waitress comes over and says, can I help you with anything else? And he says, nah, nothing. And he doesn't even look at her. He's looking down and maybe he's reading a paper or whatever he's doing. And, they, and what kind of guy is that? You're, how would you think that guy is in life? Do you, would you think he's an executive for a company? Uh, would you judge his appearance and his demeanor and automatically filter that through your unconscious and say, well, maybe this guy, he's just, you know, he's a lower level employee, he's not happy with life, probably struggling financially. Whether or not that's true or not, you're going to be creating in your mind your image of who he is and what he's about. Now, the guy next to him at another table, the waitress goes over to him with his food, and he's got a giant smile on his face. He says, thank you so much, Jennifer. He uses her name. He's looking at her name tag. He's acknowledging her. He said, that looks fantastic. He starts engaging in conversation with her. He's sitting up straight. He's impressive. He looks like a great guy. They may be dressed the same, but the demeanor of the second guy is it's, I guarantee it. It'll literally trigger inside you a certain a certain unconscious idea of how that guy is. He's a boss. He's successful. He's happy. He's going places. You're going to do that. The outer reflection comes from within. The reason I know this to be true. You've just thought it. When you thought about those two guys in the restaurant, you automatically assign to them your paradigms on how you think they are in reality, whether true or not. It doesn't really matter whether it's true or not. That's their reality in your eyes. You will judge them based on those appearances. You will interact with them based on their appearances. Which one would you get up and talk to if you're walking by? You're going to talk to the guy looking down and just slovenly, or you're going to talk to the guy that's excited and happy? You're going to talk to the guy that's excited and happy automatically. That's just the way you will go. Even if you're not excited, he'll get you motivated and you'll start talking to him and you'll be excited too. So it's your, your, your unconscious mind is like a hard drive that you fill with data 24-7 every day all of your life and your gut feelings come from within. They come from unconscious. So your gut feelings about those two guys come from a myriad of experiences that you've had in the past where a guy that looked like the first guy, and you, you were right, is your whole back experience came from that whole memory, that whole unconscious uh, thought process came from an experience or many experiences in your past. Or you had another experience where the guy that was happy and excited, sitting up straight and talking and, and, and being, being terrific outwardly. Your experience with that type of person comes from your past. So instantly, in a split second, your mind 
will decide for you what they're all about. And you will decide whether or not you're going to interact with them or not. If I'm, if I have a salesperson come to me, just looking really the part, not excited, just low level energy, no energy at all. I'm never going to buy from a guy like that. It doesn't matter what he's selling. But the guy that's interacting with me, that's excited and on point, he's he's running circles around me, he's having a good time, he enjoys his job, he enjoys what he's selling and he believes in it, I'm probably going to buy something from him. Which is why I don't go shopping a lot because I'm a sucker for really good salespeople. I myself, I think I'm a really good salesperson because I project out how I feel inside. I feel happy and excited and it comes off automatically, automatically. I was at a meeting today with a deli owner, uh, ostensibly for a mortgage application, but he really didn't want to move forward on anything right now. It turns out after a 35 minute conversation, he's going to be picking me for his accounting for that business. That one hour drive meeting and drive back home was probably worth about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars in my pocket in the next twelve months. Not too shabby for a one hour meeting. And the reason he is doing that is because I was excited. I was pre I wasn't acting like the normal accountant where I just sitting there looking at the numbers. I was giving him advice, giving him suggestions, interacting with his customers as they were coming in. Heck, I would have got up and served some sandwiches if it would have let me. I would have, I would have sliced some brujut if he asked me to. I was having fun being in this guy's store. I really had a good time and it projected outward. As a result, not even looking for the business, I got the business because I wasn't there for accounting. I was there for a mortgage. He's not going to qualify right now and we moved on. But that's the way that works. It's pretty cool uh, if you think about it. But, you know, if God walked into a room and asked you, sit you down and say, I, please tell me a little bit about what's going on in your life. Would you sit up straight? Would your eyes be wide open? And would you be smiling? Would you be interacting and excited? Or would you be slovenly, chest down, crestfallen, depressed, eyes half closed? How would you react? Pick any mentor. It doesn't have to be God. God's a perfect example. But if you choose somebody that you admire and you respect, how would you act? How would you act with that individual? I think it's important. Um... What I want you to do, the whole goal of this particular talk is I want you to start observing for the next few days. I want you to start observing yourself as if you're looking in a mirror and other people. I want you to start thinking about how you project yourself outward to the world. Do you smile? MJ has this favorite movie of hers. We watch it every year. Christmas time is called Elf. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, it's kind of fun movie. Elf. Goofy movie, actually. Uh, I forget who's in it. Uh, Will Farrell, I think. I forget. So whoever's in it, he's funny. But his, her favorite line in the movie, and she laughs every time she hears it, it's smiling. It's my favorite. She'll hear it. And she'll crack up. She'll crack me up. And it's all good because that's his favorite thing to do, smiling. So if you're smiling outwardly, that's going to project outward. Smiling is tremendously, it, it's healthy. It improves your health. It improves your mindset. It improves your mood in an instant. Because you can't have two moods different from each other. You can't have a, a, a sad or an upset or an angry mood or, or a happy, smiling mood. You can't do it. It's impossible. You have to have one or the other. And if you can take the negative mood and turn it into a smile, you'll find yourself smiling and people around you will start smiling. I think that's a wonderful thing. I want you to choose your words very carefully. Because your programming leads to beliefs, which leads to an attitude, which leads to feelings, which leads to action. The programming is the words. So the words lead to the eventual action. So watching what comes out of your mouth is incredibly important. Your words will project emotions. Words are emotions. In fact, every word that you utter will literally create an emotion attached to that word. It's automatic. Why? Well, because we spend 10, 15, 20, 30 years of our lives talking and everything that we talk about and everything that we hear we attach a memory we attach an emotional component to it you might want to call it brain chemistry but that's exactly what it is it's brain chemistry something negative happened to you you attached emotion to a word and as a result those words now trigger you so your triggers will affect you you can hear one word right now it'll trigger you negative in an instant your whole mood will change or you can hear a great word hi philip what's going on brother Thank, oh, you had a great a great radio show yesterday. I enjoyed that, my man. I appreciate it. I listened to it a little bit late, but it was really good. A little bit of an echo in the beginning. I don't know why. That That is maybe it's the live. Uh, when you're doing a live on Facebook, it tends to uh, echo a little bit, I think, sometimes. Anyway, 
So if 20 year old words bother you still, then that's your fault. You're letting something said to you 20, 25, 35 years ago still bother you today. It's ridiculous. Stop it. You control it. You can control how you react to those old words. You can flush your new reactions to the old words by deciding to. Just, just don't own them anymore. I think it's incredible. If somebody comes up to me and says, how are you doing? I always say, I'm fantastic, but I'm getting better. It usually cracks them up and it makes me feel good. You'll never catch me saying, ah, crappy day, hate it, can't wait to be over. I just don't do that. You'll never be around me when I do that. You want to be the person that's like that around the people that you're around. You, we all know people, and I'll close with this. We all know people that uh, they brighten a room when they leave. They leave the room, though, the room brightens up. They're just negative. They, they, they suck the energy out of everybody that's around them. I call them battery drainers. There are other people that are battery chargers. You can get around a battery charger just a few minutes, and no matter what mood you're in, you're going to be elevated. Might not be perfect mood, but you're going to be elevated because you're going to be pulling energy from them. You're going to be enjoying the conversation, enjoying the connection. Are you a battery drainer when you're around people, or are you a battery charger when you're around people? Do people, do people enjoy being around you to pull positive from you and thereby increasing their own positivity? Or are you someone that when they're around you, they don't want to be around you. I mean, that's, that's just the way you have to think. So by observing yourself, watching your words carefully, watch what comes out of your mouth, and watching other people, you'll start learning how to differentiate between certain physicalities that we all have and the underlying mood or, or thought process of that person, if not the one looking at you in the mirror, which would be you. So... Uh, I'm just going to tell you this real quick. Just, we all, we all go through this. I, I'm guilty of it, just like everybody else. We all have our moods. We all have our swings. If you keep that bad mood all day, if you wake up with it and you go to sleep with it, you own it. If you wake up with it, you can fix it within minutes. Understand you're blessed. Understand the blessings that you have. And understand that you're great where you are right now. You just need to make some minor tweaks to your personality and I think you're going to be fantastic. So with that, I'm going to say good night. Happy Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. I don't know if it's going to rain or snow or what. But right now, there's been no snow. We are February 10th tomorrow, and there is no snow. MJ and I are 48 days away from her birthday vacation in Cancun. We are excited about that, and we're really pumped about that. We have a lot of work to do between now and then. So we're going to say good night. We'll catch you guys on the rebound. God bless. Be well.